On today's episode of RC Kicks, we're starting to paint up the body for Rebecca's Sand Scorcher. So stay tuned to find out more. Hi and welcome to RC Kicks. On today's show, well, we're back working on the Sand Scorcher for Rebecca and we'll be working on the body this time. Now, if you haven't seen the previous videos for this, I'll put a link up here, go check those out first. There's some build videos for Rebecca when she put the car together. And I think the last video I did in the series, I painted up this engine from Knight Customs. So uh, go check those out and then come back to this one. So what are we doing today? Well, the plan is to make a start on the body. But there's a few changes I want to make, a bit like I did on the Herbie body. I want to delete the sunroof and also do a delete of this joint here between the front and the back. It just makes the car so much cleaner looking, which I really like. Also, there's mold lines that go across the arches there and there. And also on the back, they've got to go as well. We're going box art. Well, as close to box art as I could get. I picked up a couple of paints from the local car shop, which is a Ford Monza Blue, which kind of looks close to the box. And then I've gone for a cream, a bit like this one here instead of the white, as I like that sort of retro look. Yeah, it's really nice. And that turned out to be an Alpine white from a Volkswagen. Now, one thing I learned when I painted up the Herbie body before, was you've got to be very careful about getting a good bond between the paint and the plastic. Now on this body, it turned out to be quite fragile and I, uh, I don't want to do that again. I wasn't very happy with it. There's a few chips where this fell off the wall. Um, and when I was actually doing some bits and pieces on it with the detailed work, I had some of the paint came off a little bit. So I want to try and rectify it on this body. So the plan is, instead of just using normal primer, scuffing up the surface, primering and painting, I'm actually going to use etch primer. Now if you don't know, etch primer has like a acid in it, where it basically bonds itself to the material. Now normally you use this on a car when you want to use it on metal and things like that, so that's why I didn't use it previously. But I'm told, and a few of you have commented, that this is actually safe to use on these bodies. So we're going to find out whether this is going to turn into a gooey mess or it's actually going to work. So uh, that's a first, so we'll try that. Um, right, so what we've got to do is I've got to key everything, remove the uh, mold marks, then we've got to fit the front, glue it all in, then I'm basically going to use some car filler, which actually worked really well and fill in the front and the roof, like I said. So that's the plan. So let's crack on and key up the body ready for primer. And that's where we got to stage one. So what have I done so far? Well, I've actually <laughs> put three layers of etch primer on. What I find works for me in the way that I do it is I put some filler on, then I sand it down, then I put some etch primer over it and that really shows up the imperfections. Then I sand it again. Then if I need to, I use a bit more putty. Then I'll go over it again sand it down and go over it again until I can't see any imperfections or as good as I want it to be. You can keep going and going until you have absolutely no imperfections like you would on a car, but uh, on something like this, you get to a point where it's 99% it's of the way there. So going over it another one or two times to really dial that out, you don't really notice it. And if you roll this car over once, you'll have more scratches than what you're trying to get rid of right at the beginning. So uh, as long as I don't see any joins, any lines, and the light doesn't pick up any edges, 
I'm pretty happy. The hardest part I found is when you get the uh, join marks at the front from the mold, they actually go up the body a fraction. Now that doesn't sound that difficult, but there's a line that runs across. So the join meets it. So if you want to delete it, you've got to be really careful of this extra line here and you can't really get in. So that makes it a little bit of a challenge to get right. Also, you have like a petrol cap at the front as well. So you've got to be careful you don't start deleting that. So those are the slight issues. The ones on the rear aren't as bad because it's easier to get to on both sides. But you still have to be careful because you've got the rain rail that runs across. You don't want to start deleting it. Um, so there you go. It just takes a little bit of time. I found that... You you don't need a lot of filler. Don't just make up loads and smear it all on because it will take you ages to get rid of it. One thing that's uh, nice about this versus a car is that because it's plastic, you can slowly remove edges of the plastic as well. Whereas when it's a metal car, shaving off the metal with a sander is not the same. So uh, you can actually get a quite nice finish where you can't actually see it. And then when you put your paint over the top, it looks seamless. So what's next? Well, I haven't decided if I'm going to give it one more coat of etch primer. Then I'm going to do a wet sand over the areas to key them up again. Then we're going to lay down the, uh, what is it called? Volkswagen Alpine White. Then this body has the blue over the white. So what I've got to do is I've got to lay down the white today and then I'm going to leave it for about three or four days so that the white really dries because I'm going to mask straight onto the white and I don't want to pull it off but it will be seamless through this video so don't worry but that's how I plan to do it so that the body has real time to dry and harden because I don't want to rip the paint clean off when I put masking tape on it to paint up the blue right wish me luck it's 24 hours later so I've given the paint time to harden because obviously we're going to put masking tape on top of the paint now I've just spent the last two hours masking up the body as it is now so that uh, we can just blow it all in blue I went online and I saw a few other people's uh, videos on how they painted it where they had issues and I think what I'm going to do is I've actually masked it all up using Tamiya edging tape to try and get the edges in one go. One thing I found is if you have overlaps, you tend to get things creeping through. But there's so many edges on this. What I think I'm gonna do now is I'm going to actually put maybe one to two coats of the pink, the uh, off-white over the whole car again to hopefully try and seal any gaps. Because once I spray the blue, the blue and the white contrast so much that any kind of imperfections, you can't really hide them. And I think that's the biggest thing people have an issue with, is to get really crisp lines. Now I've done the best I can to do the lines all in one go, especially the roof, which was fun, and then round the fronts, so that there's just a continuous seam, not just a piece, another piece, another piece. Doing it all in one go, hopefully gives you a nice uniformed edge and I've done that round each of the kidney fronts the roof is done all in one go and then I've tried to do this line all in one go as well my main concern areas are around the hinges and around that bit by the door because it just lifts slightly 
Now I can paint over the hinge, that's not a problem. But what happens is it tends to ride up the sides of the hinges. So that's a little bit of a challenge that uh, I think is going to be an issue. So I'm hoping that this is going to save me that little problem. Right, wish me luck. <laughs> this is probably the most complicated and work not work kind of uh, body. Hiding things is going to be super tricky. Right, let's see how good it turns out. Yeah. So three coats later and this is what I've got. So what I did, I did two coats of the Alpine White until it ran out. And then I've done three coats of the Monza Blue. you think Monza would be red, wouldn't you? Anyway, so it's drying, but it's still a little bit tacky. I'm gonna wait just a little bit longer and then I'm gonna start peeling things off. I don't want it to set hard before I pull things off as it can tear the paint. So that's the plan. It went on okay. It's just whether I've got any overspray or not. <laughs> now there's not much of a way that I can hide it apart from spraying a bit of the uh, white into a jar with a paintbrush and then touching it in. That's all you can kind of do really. What I'm gonna do after that is decide whether I'm gonna put the decals on it and then lacquer the whole thing or whether I'll lacquer it and then put the decals on. I honestly don't know yet, I haven't got that far. So, wish me luck. This is going to be a no way to hide anything if it doesn't pan out. <laughs> wish me luck. So there you go. Yes, I think I just about got away with it. It's not perfect, but it's close enough that I'm happy with it. The plan is now, what I've got to do is leave it for about four or five days, then I've got to wet sand it, especially the roof. Because I was trying to get this content made for you, uh, I only left the cream for about 14, 15 hours, whereas you should really have left it for like four or five days to really harden. So in the roof, you can see the masking tape lines. Now, once I T-cut that, it will come out, but it just adds a bit more work for me. And also, I, you know, I was worried I was gonna pull the paint off. Luckily, no paint came off. I seem to have got a good bond. So I can highly recommend using etch primer because I couldn't have done that on the Herbie not using the etch primer. I seem to have got a good addition. Um, some things that worked well, when you do your lines with this tape, try and do it all in one go. Definitely like the roof. I did that all the way around and I had one join at the back. What I would have normally done is done a bit on the side, then a bit and then another bit, and then that breaks the seal. So definitely do as much of it as you can in one go. I did the whole side to there in one go. I did the roof in one go. And this back section I did from that join all the way around to that join there. And then I've just touched in the joins a little bit. Joins always a problem because that's where the paint creeps underneath, but then you can just touch it in a little bit there. Um, one thing that makes it even more difficult is the line goes right through the door hinge the handle. So running a line across that is not easy because you've got to cut it and then you've got joins as well, but run it all in one go and then just uh, cut it to get round the hinges. So yes, yeah, quite a challenge. The only thing that I'm not super happy with at the moment is the front kidneys. These are really hard because you've got the lip. So they come off okay and my plan is I will T-cut round them and hopefully that will give me that super sharp line. They're okay at the moment, but I'd like to get them a little bit sharper if I could, because they're right on the bonnet, so they can't hide anything. Um, I've also got one fingerprint there that I need to get rid of. But all in all, I've got no runs, and it seems to be okay. Probably one of the most difficult paint jobs you'll do, or I've done, where you just can't hide anything. If you're doing a, like, um, where is it? If you're doing, one color onto white 
it's got to be perfect otherwise you, you, it just shows up so badly so there you go so the, what's next well i'm going to leave this for about four days and then i'm going to wet sand it and tea cut it all and then i'm going to put the decals on and then we're going to lacquer the lot so that's the plan so stay tuned for that one